Good morning, members of the GPFI, partners, ladies and gentlemen. Five years ago, financial inclusion was a new term in the G20. Since then, I have spoken to hundreds of people around the world whose lives are being transformed by access to financial services. People like a group of women in Indonesia. About to go abroad to work, they were learning how to manage their finances and make a budget so they could send money home, save for the future, and have the possibility to go back to educate their own children. People like a fish seller in Lima, who finally qualified for a loan through an assessment of his business acumen and personal habits. He was able to grow his business, stabilize his family's prospect, and even give his child an education. And people like a farmer in Mali, who showed me how easily and quickly she received money from a son through her mobile phone, even though she had a hard time reading. Today, there's much more understanding of the essential role of financial inclusion for individual well-being, for building resilience, and for accelerating economic growth and job creation. And many more policymakers recognize that financial inclusion, financial stability, and financial integrity are not just compatible, but mutually reinforcing. And this has opened many possibilities. There has been a fundamental shift in the regulatory environment overall. And this has opened many possibilities. Innovation in regulation, like tiered KYC. Innovation in products and sustainable business models. Innovation in partnerships, like those that are delivering government social welfare benefits through electronic means in a more efficient and convenient way. And let us not overlook innovation in data, which is so valuable for evidence-based policymaking. All these collective results are impressive as financial inclusion is becoming a reality in many countries. Still, much more remains to be done. Targeted interventions are needed to take proven approaches to scale and address persistent gaps. There has been an impressive number of national commitments on financial inclusion. It is so important that these are reaffirmed and the hard work of implementation is supported. This is also a good time to look ahead to emerging themes, such as those stemming from new issues of digital technology, and how to invigorate inclusion in countries that are in earlier stages, or those that face big challenges in infrastructure and capacity, or are recovering from disaster or crisis. Getting these outcomes requires all the stakeholders working together. It requires coordinated messages and outreach, continuing to share knowledge and best practices, harnessing even more synergies across sectors, and more consultation with the private sector. The G20 represents two-thirds of the world's population, 85% of its GDP, and, I should add, 1.4 billion of the world's financially excluded people. As such, its actions have significant impact. I wish to congratulate the GPFI for all the work you have done so far, and now with your second Financial Inclusion Action Plan. This plan reminds us that universal access to financial services is achievable with sustained political leadership, coordination, and public-private partnership. I really look forward to continue to collaborate on this important effort with the G20, the GPFI, and the many other engaged national leaders and partners to make financial inclusion a reality.